Hi, in this video we're going to focus on learning how to use Dreamweaver and Cascading Style Sheets, also known as CSS, to apply styles to a web page. For instance, here's the plain 502 page you created, and then once you apply CSS, it can look something more like this. And so, the first thing you want to do to get going is you want to save a copy of your plain 502 page as simply 502. So I'm going to do File, Save As, and I'm going to make sure that I save this into my 502 folder that's in my local site root. I'm going to save it as 502.html. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm in my local view and I'm going to create a folder for my CSS style sheets. So I'm going to right click and do new folder. I'm going to call this styles. Now in this case I have a folder that I have my HTML files in. I have an image folder for all of my images on my site. And then I also have a folder that I call old where I just keep old files before I delete them. And then now I have a styles folder. I'm also going to create a folder that we'll use later on for audio. You could always create one for video as well if you wanted to. There are a lot of ways in Dreamweaver to create a style sheet. For this example, we're simply going to go to File, New. And over here from Blank Page, we're going to go down and hit click on CSS. And we're going to hit Create. So now that we have our blank CSS style sheet, we're going to save it by doing File, Save As. So I'm going to make sure I'm at the root level and I'm going to find my styles folder. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to call this 502.css and hit save. Once I save it, I should see the CSS file right over here under styles. So I can expand that and I can see it so that looks good. I can also double check and make sure that under my 502 folder, I see my 502 HTML file and I do. So now that we've created a style sheet, we now need to attach it to the HTML document. So Dreamweaver, there's more than one way to do this. You can always go to Code View and hand code it in. Or if you just go to Format, CSS Styles, and Attach Style Sheet, you would browse for the style sheet. If you remember, it's in the Styles folder. It's called 502.css. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to make sure Link is selected and hit OK. So now if I go to Split View, I can see that this is what it basically added. One other way that you can always attach a style sheet is if you have the styles panel and you can always go over to window CSS styles to make sure it's selected and when you do it you'll see this little link where it says if you mouse over it says attach style sheet so you can always do it that way as well. So now that we've attached the style sheet one thing you should notice in Dreamweaver is you can see the related file here and so this is a way that Dreamweaver tries to help you. And so while we have it open in another tab, we can actually close that. And within Dreamweaver, we can go from source code view. And once you're in source code view, you can go with code view, split view, or design view. Or we can click on our CSS view. And so what this is actually doing is letting us edit that CSS file where source code is letting us edit the HTML file. And you'll notice we have an asterisk there that is reminding us to save. So we're simply going to save this file. Okay, so let's start to style our page. So I'm going to click on the CSS file. So I can see the CSS here and the design view to the right because I have split view. So get comfortable going in between split view, design view, and code view. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to comment. I'm going to put a comment by clicking on the second one. For CSS comments and I'm going to type in tag styles. There's three main ways that you want to th think of CSS. You can apply styles to tags, so for instance an H1 tag or a body tag. You can also create what's called a class. There are also classes. Classes are whenever there's a certain style you want to apply more than once and then there are also IDs. So now it's still in split view, I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to type in body because I want to redefine the body tag. I'm going to type in two curly braces and then in between these curly braces are where we're going to enter the styles that we want to apply to the body tag. And so if we click back over on our HTML here and we go to source code, you can see that our main content is all within the body tag. So now back to the CSS. I'm going to start with font family, so I'm just going to click F 
and you'll start seeing that it brings me right down here so if I double click on font family I can then choose what do I want my, the body of my page the font family to be In this case I'm going to choose Georgia and it lists multiple fonts here because the font is dictated by the fonts that the user has installed on their machine and so in this case it's going to start with Georgia if the user doesn't have Georgia it's going to substitute times new Roman if the user doesn't have Times New Roman, it's going to use Times or just any basic defined serif font after that. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to close it with a semicolon. I'm going to enter and I'm going to, I want to do font size so I can scroll down through or if I just type F it'll bring me close to it. I'm going to click on font size. So you'll see that they give you a number of fixed as well as relative options here. I'm going to actually just type in 100%. Close it with semicolon. I decided to use 100% because it's going to basically base this on the user's browser. I've chosen to opt for relative units. There's great debate whether you should use fixed units or relative units, and it's likely going to change over time. Now I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to type in color for a text color, and I can click on this. In this case, I can use my color picker to mouse over to find the color I want or if you know the color you like, which in this case I know what I want, I can simply type in, I can simply type it in. And if I click over here you can see things start to change. Last but not least I'm going to click line height. I'm just going to do 1.2 M. Alright, I'm going to save this. So we've just been adding to the 502 style sheet directly from the split view or from the code view. However, there are a lot of ways that you can add styles in Dreamweaver. For instance, if I click on the right and and I can do this in full design view if I wanted to. If I click down here, if I click on body tag, so body selected. Over here you'll notice that in the CSS styles and sometimes it might be covered up so you just have to drag around to make sure that you see this panel here you might have to close some of these others but you'll notice that you can see the things I've already selected I could add other properties if I wanted to for instance maybe a background color and you can always once you have it selected too, click the pencil and this will open up you can apply more styles so I'm going to cancel I'm going to add two more I'm going to add a background color in this case I know the color I'm going to use but if I wasn't sure I could double click color use the file picker add my semicolon and you'll see off to the right the color change but in this case I know exactly what I want to use I want to use this color and just like that and so this is actually short code basically it comes in two so this stands for six six and three and so that's the way it worked. So don't be surprised when you see a short code used instead. So in this case, I'm going to do a file save, and I'm going to preview in a browser. So I can see what it looks like. It's looking pretty good. Minimize this. Another option you can do to preview is I can click on design view and live view, and it will give me a basic idea of what the page looks like. So I'm going to get out of live view and I'm going to go back to split. So the next thing I want to do is I want to apply a style to the H1 tag. So if I actually click on my source code you'll see that I have an H1 tag here and so I want to apply a style to that. Now I could do that the same way I did before but I'm going to show you another way of doing it. I'm going to click on source code and design view. I'm going to go over here to the CSS styles window and I'm going to click on this plus sign where it says new CSS rule. So in this case, you'll notice that because I'm on source code view, it's right away down below, it's going to apply any styles to this 502 style sheet, which is what I want it to do. But if we work our way from the top down, Dreamweaver first wants to know, do I want to create a class, an ID, redefine a tag, or do a compound? I'm going to actually select tag, and I'm going to scroll all the way up till I find my H1 tag. And you'll notice that I can add styles to all of these other tags. So I'm going to double check that it's going to apply to the 502.css and click OK. I'll pull this up. So in this case font family we're going to choose Verdanda. 
I'm going to choose my font size for my H1 tag, let's say 36. And I'm going to choose my font weight to be bold. In this case, I'm just going to hit apply, and I can see the change already take. I'm going to hit OK. And so now I can look at it. But after looking at it, you know, I, I, I think I want to make this a different color. So I simply click anywhere in here, and I can click H1. And you'll notice that it comes up, and I check that this is the rule for H1. And I'm going to basically add a color to this. So I'm going to go to color and click over here. And so this is where I can use the color picker, or if I, and it already went ahead and did it, but I'm going to, if you click to the right of it, I could type in the one that I want to use. So click over here, and we can see what that looks like. And so right now the contrast still isn't great, but as we start adding some other elements, you'll start to see how it all comes together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a file, save all. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on the new HTML5 tags. Because in this case, when we look at our source code and if we go to split view, we can see that we actually have the header tag, section tag, and we have a footer tag at the bottom that we all need to apply some styles to. So I'm going to click on 502 CSS, and I'm going to start with header, curly brace. And so in this case, if I look up here, I, I'm going to actually add some space here. I like to try to make sure this is consistent. So I'm going to hit enter there to add some space. So we're going to start by adding some font color. So I'm going to type in color. And in this case, I know the color I want to use. So I'm not going to use the color picker. And I hit enter to go to a new line. When you first come up here, you can just scroll down till you find what it is you need. I just have a habit of just typing in and going from there. Once again, I know the color I want. So I'm going to type in the short code for it. And once again, I can click to the right and scroll up if I want to see what's happening. And you can see that it's, for that tag, it's adding that background color. And so that looks good. Now I'm going to add a width. So I'm going to hit Enter, type in width. So in this case, with width, certain pages like Wikipedia that are real content heavy will basically give a fluid width where basically the content takes up the whole page. The problem with that with certain websites, and it depends always on the focus of the website, is long line lengths become tough to read. So in this case, I'm going to add a fixed width of 960 pixels. So the next thing I'm going to do to have it not display this way is I'm going to type in display. And you see it gives me a number of options. I'm going to select block and type in semicolon. There, and you can see it starts to take shape. So in this case, because I've essentially, the only thing I have in my header tag is my H1, I don't feel the need to define the font family because it's basically being inherited. In fact, even the font color I could delete because they're redundant. If I was going to add more text in my header tag that I wanted outside of my H1, that's where this would become important. For instance, let's just show you an example. If I select over here I can find out where I am if I added any text here it's red because I've defined it and so it's in some ways it's harmless and if you don't know exactly what your site's gonna be like over time it's okay to leave it there but for now we're gonna add one more thing we're gonna add padding and so padding is basically gonna give that that white space around and so you can add padding in a number of ways. You can inherit it from the page. I can add one figure, like 10 pixels, and then in this case, let's go to design view. It added 10 pixels above to the right, bottom and to the left. What you can always do, let's go back to here, is sometimes though you might want a different size at the top versus the left or the right. So in this case, I'm going to do one pixel at the top, and then 10 pixels on the right, one pixel at the bottom, and 10 pixels on the left. And so it basically works, and so this order is basically clockwise. So you imagine you start at the top, you move to the right, bottom, and left. So let's click over here. All right, that looks much better. We're going to define the section tag. So rather than doing it over here in the left in the design section, I'm going to actually click on the right. I'm going to click section, and I'm going to show you. We're going to add a new style. 
And so this is basically redefining an HTML element. This is one of the reasons we like HTML5. So selection is selected. If you don't see it there, you can always find it. Hit OK. So in this case, I want to do some of the same things I did before. For instance, I want to add a background color of CC9. So if I click here, I can type in CC9. You can see what it did. So for background, I'm going to actually take my picker and I'm going to just mouse over so it gets right in there. And you can see it's not quite what I had before. So I'm going to actually change that. Then I'm going to click on block. I'm going to click on display. And I'm going to click on block. And I'm going to hit apply. Go down to box. And I'm going to type in the width, 960, because I want it to be the same as the header tag. And so here with padding, I can actually just do this and I can type in 1, 10, 1, 10. You notice that I chose pixels, but once again, you can always choose to use an M or percent or any of these other unit of measurement. So I'm going to hit apply. And I'm going to move this over so I can take a look and see what it looks like. Contrast looks a little off, but I'm going to leave this for now. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to preview it always prompts me to save it so that's okay alright so we're getting there the contrast still isn't great so we're gonna work on improving that and so what I can do one way that I can approach fixing this is so what it is is I can either lighten my background color or in this case I could make my font color darker so in this case it what it is is it's this body font let's scroll up so in this case I'm gonna leave the body font is is but I'm gonna actually copy this the 663 I'm gonna go down to section and I'm gonna add a font color on copy and paste that be sure to close it with a semicolon just like that you can start to see it taking shape so I'm gonna hit save all I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to add some line height. I'm going to do 1.4M. And that's just going to basically make this a little more readable, add a little space. Now notice, though, that the padding here is different than here. And so basically, this is spelled out where this is a shortcut. And you can even, um, and there are even more shortcuts you can use. So, And I can see that from me playing around there is an extra section tag in there in my CSS page so I'm going to delete that so so far it's looking good we're going to now redefine the footer tag that's the last curly brace curly brace put cursor in make some space and so for this for the footer all I'm going to do is actually add something to make it just the font a little smaller because the footer is off in that kind of small space so I'm going to do font, and I'm going to go down and hit size. I was using a relative size earlier. I'm going to say 0.9 M. So you can see it made a little, and if I wanted to, I could start playing with it, see if I like 0.8 better. And you can always play with the font color more and more, too, if you want it to be a nice, subtle color in the background. So just like that, we've redefined the body tag, the H1 tag, the header tag, to the section tag and the footer tag. Nice and easy using CSS. We're now going to focus on adding an ID. To, typically when you think about using an ID versus a class, it's basically if you're going to use it once you would use an ID or if you're going to use it multiple times on a page you want to use a class. So in this case I just want to make this a different color. Now in this case because this is a section, if I actually just change the font color of this section, it would actually apply to this section as well. So I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go to source code. I'm going to put my cursor right in front of the D here. I'm going to go to insert, and I'm going to go to layout objects, and I'm going to click on div tag. So rather than class, I'm going to type in for ID and name. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to copy and paste this and move this in here and get rid of the text. Now, keep in mind, if I undo this, I could always simply, over in the split view, as long as I'm on source code, so it's important to pay attention from, you know, 
pink shows up on the CSS page where you just see the blue and black and light gray over here. So for the section, rather than doing it the other way, I could just type in div ID, hit enter, and give it a, a name. In this case, I'm going to call it name. Close that tag, and then if I go at the very bottom, right, and so in this case, I'm going to do it above the HR. So right at the paragraph tag, I'm going to close that tag. So now what it's done, and you'll see the little yellow lines, if I mouse over I can click on it, and you'll see down here it's saying that this is the, a div with ID equals name, or if you look over here with split view, and this is why we love to have the split view so you get comfortable looking at stuff, I can then click on new CSS rule, and you'll see that it has name, I check that it's in 502 CSS, and I hit OK. And so in this case I'm just going to try to make this the same color red as the heading. So I'm going to I'm going to click on the color picker, go up and mouse over it. And I matched it. I'm going to hit OK. So just like that I added a style to everything within the div with an ID equals name. I'm going to do a file, save all. So the last thing I'm going to do is show you how to add a class. And so class would be, let's say that there are certain sections on your page that you want to highlight. You want to make a different color. So in this case, let's say that for each one of these assignment names I want to make blue. Well, what I would do is I can highlight this. And once again, I could create a div and give class equals a name and do it that way. And so I could do that all within this code view. I could also insert layout objects div. But another option you have with Dreamweaver is down in the properties inspector if I click on CSS class and then if I click down here make sure I have new CSS rule. So I click on that and then over here I'm gonna find a nice blue and when I click on that blue it pops open this new window. Now it sees that by default it's class. If for some reason it's not, make sure that's selected. This is where you need to enter a name. So I'm going to say blue text starting with a period. Make sure 502.css is selected and hit OK. And You'll notice that when I do that what it did was is it created a span tag with class equals blue text and then a closing span tag right after an etiquette page. But now that's blue. So as I move forward, I find the other things I want to apply that class to. As long as CSS is selected down here, not HTML, I can go down here and I can find under apply blue text and so you can see what it does. And you can start paying attention to how it does the code. It keeps adding that span tag with the class equals blue text. So I'm going to just continue. Okay, so just like that I'm going to do a file, save all, and I'm going to preview it in Firefox. So we've just covered some major ground. So we focused on how to basically add a style to a tag. In this case, we focused on the H1 tag. We then focused on the header tag, which is a new HTML5 tag, the section, and as well as the footer. We then created a div around our name here and we added an ID and applied a style to everything within that div. But then there were other elements down here where like the class that repeats and in this case we wanted to create a class that we could apply more than once. And so we created a class called blue text. Something should be said about CSS3. So CSS3 will allow you to do things that previously you couldn't do with CSS alone like for instance add rounded borders. The key with CSS3 just with HTML5 is just being aware that older browsers don't support all elements of CSS3 and as you're becoming comfortable with Dreamweaver and web development in general you might find that you're overall not going to use that much CSS3. You should be aware of what it is because there are going to be times where using CSS3 is the easiest way to accomplish a certain task. So in this example I'm just going to go back to my header and I'm going to add some CSS3 to this. So I'm in the style sheet and if I go down to border, if I go to border radius and if I type in 10 pixels, save all, 
I'm going to preview this in Chrome. You'll see what it did. It added the border pixels. Now, so what you do with CSS3 is that you basically add a new bit of code here. So I'm going to hit enter and you'll see that and I can start going through here and seeing this is basically for Mozilla browsers. And if I keep moving down, there it is. I can add 10 pixels and let's do a save all and let's preview again. And we're just going to preview in Firefox. So I can see what that looks like and so I can play with this more and if I want to change the radius, let's get back to Dreamweaver. You know, I might decide I want to do more like a 5. In this case, I'm just going to highlight, copy, and I'm going to add this to my section and my footer. And I'm going to do a save all, do one less preview. So you can see what it looks like. In this case, I could add a little bit of bottom margin to add some white space if you really want to kind of help that effect. So let's just go ahead and do that while we're having fun. And that's part of a web development is you just need to spend time experimenting with these different things. Type in bar margin bottom. Type in five pixels. In this case, I'm not sure exactly if that's what I want. So I'm just going to do a save all and I'm going to preview and see. You can see it looks pretty good. So I'm just going to go back to Dreamweaver. I'm just going to close this because I keep finding myself doing that. And once again, I'm just going to copy that code and I'm going to paste it. You got to be careful though that you don't accidentally delete a semicolon or, or a curly brace because one little thing wrong and you're going to find it's not going to work and it can be a pain hunting down where the error is. So just like that, I added a CSS3 element to this page. Now, but the more I look at this, I don't know if I want to have this margin and this exactly this way. So I'm going to go back. And that's the section. And so the section, I'm going to get rid of that. So in this case, as I'm messing with this more, I decided that for the section, I want it in the top left and the top right, but not the bottom and left. So a little different than with padding is for the borders, it starts top left, then right, then bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 5 pixels, 5 pixels, 0 pixels, 0 pixels. I'm going to copy and paste this into both, and let's see if this accomplished what I was hoping for here. Okay, so basically what I was trying to do is create this as one element 